Are you losing money as a trader? First off, listen, you're not alone. Everybody starts off losing money as a trader. Everybody starts off struggling. I don't care what people say. If you're brand new or maybe you've been trading for a while and you're still losing money, you're still just seeing a bunch of inconsistency. So maybe not in the sense of your account just keeps on going to zero, but you know, look something like this up and down. And this is whether you're trading stocks or Forex or futures, crypto, anything, whether you're a day trader or swing trader, it's okay to be losing money. It's okay to experience inconsistency. You're normal, you're a human being, and that's just part of the process. And a little background, maybe if you're new to my channel or new to my videos, I've been in the coaching, teaching, mentoring, whatever you wanna call it, since 2013. And I bring that up because I have a lot of data points, I have a lot of experiences with you know helping traders and guiding them, where I've seen these problems come up over and over and over again. And none of these people are stupid, you're not stupid. It's just a matter of, well, when you're newer, and you don't know what you don't know, you're just, your reference point, you really don't have a reference point and that can be a problem. Now, I'm not saying what I'm gonna talk about here is the only potential problem for you on why you're losing money or struggling, but it, it's, it's definitely the general framework of how it all works, but this is definitely a, a common uh, issue that I see that might be your problem. You might wanna just kind of reconsider uh, you know, and, and look into your trading, but let's look at a couple of different aspects of trading, right? Sure. Well, the goal of trading is to make money. Yes, I realize that, but there's more to it than that. So in this situation, we have get in. So in other words, you know, is there some sort of opportunity? Is there something going on here where, you know, there is an opportunity that you should get in? Now, get in, that could be a stock. It could be a cryptocurrency. It could be an option. It could be anything. But should you get in? And then, of course, that's always the big question mark, right? And how do you answer that question? Well, is there an actual opportunity there? And then you have another part of trading. Over here, you have, and of course, this arrow represents, because they both do work together, but then you have trade management. So this is after you get into the trade. I mean, you need to manage it, right? Do you hold? Do you buy more? Do you, do you sell some? Do you sell everything? And that's just all of trade management. Should you be moving your stop loss up? Should you even be putting a stop loss in at this point in time? All those different dynamics would fall under the general category of trade management. And what, what's going on a lot of times is people, when it comes to trade management, right here, that they gotta figure it out. Their, their approach, their tactics, their rules, their system, whatever you wanna call it, yeah, good stuff. That, that, that is good quality trade management. But the problem is, over here, you have the situation where you have this going on. I should, there we go. I, let me, given the artiste that I am, let me, get, let me give these people, there we go. So you have a situation where some sort of trader, who is this trader? What should I name this trader? This is uh, Sue. So Sue, she's got great, she's got great trade management. I mean, what she's doing makes sense. It's logical. It's the way you should go about it. But the problem is, she's getting into stocks. Let's just say that Sue trade. No, that's going to be a tongue twister. Let's say that Sue trades uh, options. The options that Sue is getting into she shouldn't actually be getting into them in the first place. There's not really an opportunity there. So then all of a sudden, when it comes to trade management, what's going on with Sue? Oh, I am, why am I so nervous? Why did I, I just got scared out. Oh, I just got stopped out. Oh, I just, why did I, oh, I sold too soon. Oh, I, I should have sold it sooner. Oh, I, sold, I, I, I should have bought more. And all, she is just, what is going on? What is going on? And then that's going to lead her to say, oh, you know what? The problem here is that I must not have very good trade management. Now, what is the actual problem though? Well, the problem was what? She should have never been in uh, the trade in the first place. And when you were putting yourself into a trade that you should not be into, because you shouldn't be into it, of course, trade management is gonna be difficult because you shouldn't even be in it in the first place. But if you don't know that you shouldn't be in there, then yeah, you could very easily blame trade management for your problem, when, when that's actually not your problem. 
So what is Sue gonna do? Well, Sue's gonna, I don't know, she's gonna change this and she's gonna change that. And let me try changing this right here. And she makes all those changes. And then she's thinking, okay, well, I made some changes. I have all that sort of stuff done. And then let's say she comes over here and says, you know what? I want to tweak a few things over here. I, yeah, maybe, maybe I should probably change that. I, yeah, yeah, that, you know what? And then all of a sudden she makes some tweaks and what has she done? Hey, fantastic, Sue, good job. She is now in a situation where she is now properly identified opportunities. So she's properly identified an opportunity. She gets in and then what do we have going on? Well. What? Hopefully I didn't spend too much money on that shock. Then what's going on? Well, now she, oh, trade management is still off. It's still, I'm still struggling. This trade management is destroying me. Now in this situation, it actually is trade management's fault. Why? Well, because she went and made those changes. So yes, now her trade management is truly the problem. But now do you see where Sue's at? She has no idea. In her mind, she might start like, well, pff, well, it, it's the opportunity's fault again. So maybe she comes over here and starts tweaking the opportunity again and trying to change around what she is defining as should she be getting in. And then all of a sudden, now this goes back to being as, uh, you know, not actually right. And do you, do you see just the mess, the convoluted mess? I see it all the time. People have trade management. Good job, good job, good job. But I know... It's no surprise that you're struggling with your trade management because you shouldn't even be in that trade in the first place because they don't know how to identify a true opportunity. So maybe that is the case for you. Maybe your trade management is fine. Maybe your problem is you're just putting yourself in a situation that you should never be in the, in the first place. And one of the reasons why you shouldn't be in that situation is because trade management is gonna be very difficult and more than likely impossible to do. I mean, have you ever thought about that? What makes a truly good opportunity? What makes a truly good opportunity, one of the aspects is you gotta be able to actually manage the trade. But if it's not a good opportunity, then by definition, you're not gonna be able to you know, have trade management, which you know, circular makes it, well, that's why it's not, or that's one of the reasons why it's not an opportunity and why you shouldn't be in the trade in the first place. So that very well could be the problem. Now, to be fair, maybe you do know how to identify opportunities and your trade management is what needs to be tweaked. But that is, like I said, I realize there is a whole lot of variables. You change something over here, maybe that throws off your misinterpretation of opportunity. And welcome to the complicated, welcome to the challenging world of trading. And these are the things that you need to be aware of. And this is why a lot of traders fail. This is why a lot of traders run out of money because there's so many moving parts. And when you're new and you don't know what you don't know, and you're getting information from all sorts of various sources, like I said, you're not stupid. I mean, I commend you, I commend Sue for, for, for hustling and grinding and trying to adjust here and adjust there. But when your framework and when your reference point is all out of whack, that's the problem with trading is you can't just do it forever and ever, right? If you're trying to become really good at shooting basket with basketball, you, the only thing that you need to spend is your time. And you can miss a million times, that's fine. You just you put more time in. But with trading, unless you have a money tree in the backyard, your resources are limited. You only have a certain amount of money before it goes to zero as you're trying to tweak and, and get all this stuff better. So that is why I'm a big believer in you know really kind of trying to take a structured approach to all this because if you do a structured approach step by step by step, then you establish yourself the proper reference point up front and then you know where things are maybe going wrong, how things need to be corrected. But if you're just out there and you know all it takes is 5% to be wrong. You could have 95% of things right in trading but if there's 5%, if you have any, just 5% of little frowny faces because something's messed up, that is gonna be enough to eventually sink to the ship. Might not happen right away, but it will happen because that's, that's just where, it, you know, that's where the knowledge needs to be in trading is you need to have full knowledge and a full strategy and system that's actually, you know, truly identifying opportunities and then you need to have the right trade management for that. So yeah, if you are losing money, if you're struggling, I'd encourage you, maybe look at this. And like I said, there, there are more than just identifying an opportunity and trade management in the world of trading, right? You have scanning and you have a, a multitude of other things, position sizing. Oh, I, I guess you could probably throw that into trade management. You can make a strong argument for that. But my, my point here is that I'm not saying these are the only couple of instances 
that are causing. There, there could be other things, but this is usually how it works. You think it's one thing, and the thing that you think it is is actually the right thing. So you fix the right thing, which becomes wrong, and then maybe you get the wrong thing right, but putting them all together, it's still wrong. You're not stupid. Like I said, I want to really iterate that. I'm not sitting here saying that this is some sort of problem that only idiots have. No, this is something that makes a lot of sense of why it happens. Like I said, I've been doing this since 2013. I see these th sort of things happen all the time. That's why I'm, I'm a very big believer in a structured education, a structured way of learning things, and why when I got into my real estate investing, I was like, yes, please, I need some sort of training that walks me through step by step by step because I don't need to be, you know, put, I don't need to be creating this mess for myself in the world of real estate investing where the, the numbers get a whole lot bigger. But you know, that's my take on it. This is what I've seen as whatever you want to call me, a coach, a, a mentor, a teacher, um, very commonplace. And uh, just be aware of it. And I don't, in the comment section, can you relate to any of this? I mean, when you were newer, were you fixing this and doing this? And then all of a sudden it was screwing up that. So you had to finally fine tune it. And I mean, leave, leave that in the comment section or if there's any sort of questions or anything like that, please leave those below. And then finally, if you enjoyed this video, if you would like for me to keep making these, then hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for hanging out. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.